The words indoor air pollution conjure these images. Women, predominantly, struggling to breathe in tiny, closed spaces as they go about their daily chores in remote, far-flung villages. But the problem is hardly limited to rural India. Over 50% of India's population is expected to live in urban areas by 2050. And even the air and residences in industrialized, developed cities are marred by pollutants released from cooking, cleaning and common household wares like pressed wood, air fresheners, even paint. Bangalore, dubbed the Silicon Valley of India, was once hailed for its clear blue skies. Now it sees particulate matter from construction sites and roadways wafting into homes and turning into a significant source of indoor air pollution, a common phenomenon across major cities in India. Karnataka's capital city may see 74% increase in particulate matter by 2030. And residents like 39-year-old Jagdish are already suffering the consequences. At least you know, 40 to 50 percent of my friends you know, or the colleagues who live uh, uh, around this in my place, I've you know, uh, gone for uh, air purifiers. So one or the other, see air purifiers we never thought of. So in the bang the city like Bangalore, we never thought of even having a you know fan. If you look at our uh, old houses, we never have a hook you know where we can fix the fan. So that was you know the beauty of you know it was, but that got completely destroyed. Now you know. Uh, we need to invest into the purifiers, uh, which you know keep the air quality. I'm not sure. I mean, if it is 100%, you know, uh, possible, but at least to some extent, it it is elevating and helping uh, people who are uh, prone to uh, you know kind of uh, pollution and dust, you know, uh, all around us. Ear, nose, and throat surgeon Dr. Pradeep tells us that despite the harmful impact of indoor air pollution, our collective focus remains on mitigating emissions from external sources like vehicles and factories. So, uh, basically, anything which contaminates the ambient air, your very surroundings, uh, is called indoor air pollution. It could be chemical sources or it could be biological sources. Unfortunately, it is something which is given less importance. We are only talk about outdoor air pollution, but indoor air pollution is something which we have to look into. In a western population, it's mostly maybe firewood burning to keep their houses warm. Uh, people smoke tobacco into substance abuse, construction work, all these things can produce uh, pollutants which can contaminate the air. But in India, the situation is quite different. I would say not only India, the whole of Southeast Asia for that matter, uh, most of the people during their cooking, they use firewood, they use uh, you know cow dung. There's so many other uh, you know materials which people use, which produces a lot of I would say maybe secondary contaminants. They don't completely burn up, so that is the reason pollutants are emitted into the air. This will contaminate the air and has a serious uh, effect on health of individuals. When Dr. Pradeep started practicing in Bengaluru in 2015, he tells us, okay. he treated an average of 25 patients every year for ailments related to indoor air pollution. Today, that number has gone up to 80. The indoor air pollutants are considered to be 10 times more fatal or more problematic to the health of individuals. The most common ones are the acute respiratory illnesses. It constitutes to about 44%, I would say. And uh, COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It is something which affects your lungs. It constitutes to about 54%. And the worst case, some people can even develop cancers. To help drive awareness about the dangers of indoor air pollution, Locals like Jagdish have decided to pick up the mantle by installing air quality trackers in their neighbourhoods. Organising these residents into a city-wide movement was 34-year-old Eshwarya, an independent researcher living in Jayanagar. On behalf of a non-profit, she has helped people in over 30 different localities install air quality monitoring devices that have given them a sense of agency. At the heart of this community-driven effort lies the Clarity Node, 
a compact device that can monitor particulate matter and nitrogen dioxide, two common indoor pollutants in densely populated areas. It's a fairly easy device to work with. All it really required uh, or requires is that you mount it and uh, it's, it's something that you can clip on and tightly screw off any kind of a hard uh, surface, for example, um, like a pillar or a balcony um, railing that you have. A lot of people who had access to this data did make informed choices, whether it comes to cycling on that particular day, whether it comes to wearing a mask or not on that particular day. We've had doctors who have installed it on their uh, rooftops in the hospitals who actively looked at the data and made linkages to the number of cases that they were getting on a particular day from that particular neighborhood and so on. And they also issued advisories accordingly. Jagdish and his neighbors in Vatur have used data recorded on these monitoring devices to broadcast health alerts to around 21,000 people in surrounding communities, advising on best times to ventilate their homes and how to guard against pollutants. I cannot stress the importance of the good ventilation, which is very important. So having adequate number of windows, adequate number of doors and keeping a good ventilation in the house uh, plays a big role. Proper ventilation also controls the level of humidity in a home, which can minimize the growth of biological pollutants like bacteria, animal dander, pollen and fungus, preventing allergies, asthma and other illnesses. The Clarity Node web touches all corners of Bangalore and its impact has been just as far-reaching. In another corner of the city, called Somasundara Palya, a government compost plant adjacent to homes was the main source of ambient air pollution. Lalitamba, a resident there, collaborated with peers in the Resident Welfare Association to rest a degree of clean, odorless air all thanks to the air quality data logged on devices installed in their vicinity. With this uh, monitoring system, we have data available 24 bar 7, available for a week, 15 days, whatever that uh, duration, right? So it helps us in quantifying uh, the, uh, with the data and that really helps us to build a stronger case towards uh, the stink and the smell that we had. We are planning to do, we have a court a case that is pending. We are working uh, as an organization, as an NGO organization uh, in the high court. And for that, we have actually produced some of the readings that were there. Uh, we have captured through this data to the, uh, uh, our uh, council who is working on it. Ensuring clean air indoors is a collective responsibility. This is especially true for commercial buildings that have central heating, ventilation and cooling systems maintained by several engineers and employees and require large-scale solutions. For the past three years, 31-year-old Ayush and his team have been working to purify the air in spaces like airports, malls, metros, hospitals and cinemas. Around November 2017, my parents moved to Delhi and, and around Diwali time, I'm sure we know it, that air quality, in, in, especially in NCR area, becomes really bad. And that's when my father got sick and he got admitted in the hospital. That's when I realized that this is a problem which is of epic proportions and needs a solution. We are going to switch this on. This is a testing rig. As we switch it on, we'll also record the reading on this anemometer. This anemometer basically measures the velocity of air which is being delivered here. Ayush went on to develop a filter that can be retrofitted into existing central cooling systems, an affordable alternative to expensive industry grade purifiers. Now this is something which is a product under development. So it looks very simple but what this does is basically this is an aluminium sheet with honeycomb uh, shaped uh, structures, these perforations will allow the air to pass through it and this will have a chemical coating which whenever the air comes in contact with it, it will react with the air and it will purify the air against pathogens. These pathogens will in include COVID-19. 
we are able to compute and also analyze what is going to be the indoor air quality using machine learning algorithms that we have developed in-house. These algorithms also help us replace or clean the filters exactly when it is required. It can predict when the filtration will get clogged. And, and with these technologies, we are able to maintain air quality which is 90% better than outdoors. This is what we are showing in uh, WDC 29 floor also. Kiosks in these establishments display real-time data on the quality of air indoors, making this a key educational initiative on the importance of clean air even in commercial spaces. Currently, JAR's technology purifies air across 45 black square feet in India. By committing to tackle the environmental issues of today, Bengaluru's residents are hoping to become vanguards of a greener future. This data will definitely serve you know, the person who is you know, already going through some kind of medical uh, condition with respect to air pollution or maybe any other you know, sensitivities. So he can be alerted so that you know, his precious life can be saved. From fostering greater interaction between locals and authorities to empowering individuals with data and information, these efforts can be regarded as a crucial first step towards making the problem of Indo-air pollution tangible and quantifiable.